Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2021 deck. So let's take a look at what a mono green stompy deck might look like after rotation. So starting out with our removal spells, we've got the full playset of Primal Might, X in a green for a sorcery, saying target creature we control gains plus X plus X until end of turn, and then fights up to one target creature we don't control. So this is going to be our primary removal spell in the deck. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of a Nessian Horn Beetle, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two insect that says at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control another creature with power 4 or greater, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Nessian Horn Beetle. So this is a nice 2 drop that will keep growing over time, and there's no shortage of 4 powered creatures in this deck. And then we also have the full playset of Scavenging Ooze, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two Ooze, and for a single green we can exile target card from a graveyard, and if it was a creature card we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Ooze and gain 1 life. So this is great in the grindy matchups where lots of creatures end up dying and we'll eventually be left with a giant Scavenging Ooze gaining us a bunch of life, and it's also great against any graveyard strategies or escape creatures like Uro, which are going to be quite popular after rotation as well. And then we also have two copies of Stone Cold Serpent as a very flexible creature that we can play at any point in our curve, and then has Reach, Trample and Protection from Multicolored, and enters a battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. We can even play it for X equals 1 to potentially enable one of our next creatures here, Lovestruck Beast, a 3 mana 5-5 five five that can't attack unless we control a 1-1 one one creature, but of course we can first use the Heart's Desire Adventure, making a 1-1 one one white human creature token. So later in the game, if our 1-1 one one token somehow ends up dying, we can still potentially play a 1-1 one one Stone Cold Serpent so the 5-5 five five beast can attack. Then we also have the full playset of Garrick's Harbinger, a 3 mana 4-3 beast with Hexproof from black, so it can be targeted by black spells or abilities from our opponent. And whenever the Harbinger deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, we can look at that many cards from the top of our library and reveal a creature card or Garrick planeswalker card from among them and put it into our hand. So the Harbinger can provide a nice bit of card advantage if we can consistently connect with it. So being able to potentially give it trample or increase its power and toughness is going to be key at getting the Harbinger to provide card advantage. And then we also have two copies of Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig, a 3 mana 4-4 four, four essentially. It's a 0-0 zero, zero that enters a battlefield with 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And whenever another green creature enters a battlefield under our control, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Yorvo. And if that creature's power is still greater than Yorvo's power, we can put another plus 1 plus 1 counter on Yorvo. Not going to happen very often, but we do have two copies of Elder Gargaroth in the deck as well, which can potentially help us put an extra counter on Yorvo. And then finally at 3 mana we also have two copies of Garrick's Uprising, a 3 mana enchantment that when it enters a battlefield, if we control a creature with power 4 or greater, lets us draw a card. And then it says creatures we control have trample, so this is a nice way to potentially enable the Garrick's Harbinger to connect, makes it difficult for the opponent to chum block or lovestruck beast and other various big green creatures. So very useful ability to have in a green stompy deck. And then whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters a battlefield under our control, we also get to draw a card. So the Uprising provides a nice bit of card advantage and gives all our creatures trample, which are both things we're very happy with. Of course, it's a card that doesn't impact the board. It's not a creature with power and toughness that will help us attack and block, so we can't play too many of this effect. But especially in the grindier matchups where the opponent's going to end up killing many of our creatures, having this provide card advantage and give all our creatures trample is quite nice. And then at 4 mana we also have two copies of Garrick Unleashed to complement our Garrick's Harbingers. A 4 mana Planeswalker that starts out at 4 loyalty. And then the plus 1 ability says up to one target creature gets plus 3 plus 3 and gains Trample until end of turn. So this also pairs quite nicely with the Harbinger being able to play Garrick on the following turn and giving plus 3 and Trample. And then the minus 2 says we get to make a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token, and then if an opponent controls more creatures than we do, we can put a loyalty counter on Garrick, essentially only making it cost 1 loyalty to use the ability and make a beast. So a nice ability to give us a bit of board presence, and then the minus 7 ultimate, if we can ever get to it, gives us an emblem that says at the beginning of our end step, we can search our library for a creature card and put it onto the battlefield, so this will definitely help us end the game. So while Garrick might not be as good as Vivian Arcbow Ranger, which rotates out, it's still a reasonable replacement, giving us another way of giving our creatures trample, as well as making more beast tokens. 
And then we also have three copies of Questing Beast. Don't have the full playset because it is legendary, but of course the card is very powerful. A 4-4 with Vigilance, Death Touch and Haste, and can be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. And Death Touch also combines nicely with Trample, as we can just assign one point of damage to each blocker and then Trample over for the rest. So it combines quite nicely with Garruk and with Garruk's Uprising. And then at 5 mana we've got two copies of Elder Gargaroth, a 6-6 beast with Vigilance, Reach and Trample, and whenever Gargaroth attacks or blocks we get to make a 3-3 beast, gain 3 life or draw a card, so a lot of useful abilities. We could also be playing 5 mana Vivian instead of Gargaroth or maybe play a mix of both, but because we have cards like Garruk's Uprising that reward us for playing a bunch of creatures, as well as cards like Garruk Unleashed, I prefer just sticking to the actual creature, and the Gergoroth also helps us enable the Great Henge, the 9 mana legendary artifact that costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control, so another incentive to play as many large creatures as possible, and then taps to add a double green, and we also gain 2 life, and whenever a non-token creature enters a battlefield under our control, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it and draw a card. So alongside our Garruk's Uprising and the Harbinger, this is another source of card advantage. And then going over the mana base, we've got 4 copies of Castle Garenbrick, very useful at helping us cast multiple creatures in the same turn later in the game, as well as maybe sink all our mana into a big Stone Coil Serpent, as well as 20 basic forests, and the 1 copy of Bonders Enclave as another source of card advantage. Can't really play too many copies if we also want to play Yorvo, but 1 copy with 24 green sources should be fine. So while the Stompy archetype did lose some important creatures, especially Pelt Collector at 1 mana, which sped up the deck significantly, Vivian Arcbow Ranger at 4, and some other potential 2 and 3 drops, we still are left with a pretty powerful core that I expect to see a decent amount of play post-rotation as well, and who knows which other cards we'll get in the following expansions. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. With a reasonable hand, we'll need to draw a third land, ideally. But we get to start with Heart's Desire into Horn Beetle, and then a third land gives us a four-powered creature to grow the Horn Beetle. Facing Basic Swamp. Opponent perhaps a Mono Black. And Kitesail Freebooter can snipe or Garruk Unleashed. But our opponent can be too happy to see the Harbinger here, which has Hexproof from black. So we'll get that in play first, maybe provide a bit of card advantage. Opponent passes with 3 mana up. Just gonna move to combat here. And we'll get in. Grasp of Darkness takes care of the Horn Beetle. And a chump from the Freebooter. Alright. So, let's say my opponent plays Extinction Event next turn. They can either kill the Beast and the Token or the Harbinger, so that's not too bad. So I think I'm okay playing Garrick over another creature here. And then next turn using the plus one on the Harbinger is going to be great. It's going to be a Solemn Simulacrum instead, but we can just trample over it. Our opponent might be playing the Underworld Dreams plus Peer into the Abyss combo deck here. So let's plus on our Harbinger. And probably don't want to attack with a 1 1 token just yet because it still enables the beast. I don't hate just getting another Harbinger, although Ooze is even, so if our opponent's playing Extinction Event, we get to diversify our mana costs a little bit, which is never a bad thing. So let's actually take the Ooze, and then I can use Castle, and go Yorvo into Ooze, and activate Ooze. So now we've got a nice mix of odds and even mana costs. Get to gobble up the Simulacrum. 
And our opponent's under a ton of pressure here. Extinction event, there it is. But it's only gonna get rid of half of our board. And we can just activate Scavenging Ooze here to seal the deal. Plus we could still pump with uh, Garrick as well, so even if they had another Grasp of Darkness, they would still be in trouble. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty nice opening hand. Turn 2 Ooze, turn 3 Harbinger. And we even get to start with a 1-1 one, one token on turn 1. Don't have many turn 1 plays in this deck, so it's always nice to be able to start with a Heart's Desire. I think I'm okay just playing the Ooze, and it's fine if they end up killing it. Opponent doesn't want to trade Spitter for the token, which is understandable. But uh, now I can play Harbinger, and if my opponent's play is to just play the Bone Crusher, next turn we can Primal Might. So that seems slightly better than playing the Beast here. It's gonna be another Bone Crusher plus Blazing Volley. That was unexpected. Well, I guess it's time to play a 5-5 on defense. This would be a nice spot to have access to our Bonner's Enclave to draw us a few additional cards. Got a few other nice top decks here. Great Hand, Shelder Gargaroth. Would all be excellent. Another Harbinger I'll take. Still gonna hold on to the Primal Might. We can maybe set up an attack with the Harbinger next turn. And the 5-5 five five Beast is pretty difficult for the red deck to get past, unless they've got a Torbran here, or an Embercleave, I guess. And there's Torbran. So that's gonna be the target of our Primal Mites. And Giant Attacks, so that's gonna hit me for 6. I mean, if I trade my Lovestruck Beast for it, next turn I can Primal Might, Harbinger, killing Torbran, attack. Opponent's likely chomping because they don't want me drawing a card of Harbinger. So that seems fine by me. Opponent passes. Hmm, they might have a Shock in hand. So that's going to mess up our plan significantly, because Shock will deal for damage. I can play the Uprising first and kind of force their hand on the Shock instead of having to use a Primal Might. Alright, never mind. That resolves. So, it's Primal Might for two. Although I wouldn't be able to attack past the Fervent Champion now. But next turn we can do the same with the uh, second Primal Mites. Another Fervent Champion. Alright, so do I Primal Might for the max amount here? I think I do. Could also do it for less in the hopes of drawing into a creature that we can then play right away. But I want to give myself the best chance of actually finding something useful. So Primal Might for 6. Killing the Giant seems better than killing a Fervent Champion. And we get to trample over for quite a bit. Get to look at 10 cards and find an Elder Gargaroth. 
questing beast would also be fine, but Gargoroth being able to gain life against the red deck seems a little bit more valuable. Castle Emberith does represent quite a bit of damage here, but our opponent packs it in at the side of our Elder Gargaroth. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. And it looks like it might be the mirror match. We'll hold on to the stone coil for now. Don't have a great plan against the double Lobstruck Beast here. Other than eventually playing the Gurgoroth to block and hope they don't have a Primal Might. Start out with Yorvo. Looks like a Primal Might or a Ramp Through incoming. Fair enough. So I could play Ooze, eat a creature, or I can play Harbinger. Probably just play Harbinger here. That way we have a four powered creature for the Uprising. Everyone attacking. Just a beast. Yeah, double blocking is just too bad for me here. Plays another beast. Drawing a land is great. So I could play Gargoroth and then hope there's no Primal Mites in my future. Seems like my best bet. It's gonna be Garrick instead. I am predator, you are prey. So that can pump one of the beasts up to an eight eight. So do we want to block? I kind of want to keep the Gargaroth so I can pressure Garrick next turn, but I don't have a way of pumping the Gargaroth, so it would also just trade to a Beast and a 1-1 token. So I could double block here. Still get a Gargaroth trigger. I can make a 3-3 Beast, which is probably my best choice. And take it from there. And then we'll play the Uprising, hope to draw into maybe a Primal Mites. And there's Primal Mites. I guess just trades my beasts for the Lovestruck beasts. This also triggers of dealing damage to Planeswalkers. So... I guess it's still reasonable here. And then send everyone at Garrick. The alternative is just playing Harbinger or Ooze, start eating some creatures, but Ooze is going to be great next turn too. So let's Primal Might for two. And they have to double block the Serpent to keep Garrick alive. But we're still gonna get a Harbinger trigger. Thanks to the Trample from Uprising. I 
they can minus two Garruk. Although we did miss on the trigger, sadly, putting a hench on the bottom. It's gonna be questing beasts. All right, now the plus from Garruk looks pretty good. And a 1-1 one, one stone coil. Let's activate castle. See what we can draw off the Harbinger first. And then... Uh, Send Harbinger at Garruk. That happens. Well, and find... Probably my own questing beasts. If they have another Garruk, they can give the beast plus three and trample. And then I'm dead even if I play another blocker here, so it doesn't matter that I miss out on a 2-2. Let's just take our own beasts. And then I can still gain two with ooze. Close game for sure. Uprising doing a good job. Alright, so that's gonna kill our uprising. So, sadly, I'm forced to block with the ooze here, so I can just trade off cleanly. I guess that's not the Underworlds. And then next turn, I can maybe find something else with a Harbinger. Not requesting beasts. No need to use a castle this time. find another ooze. I think that beats Lovestruck Beasts. If they have another questing beast, I'll happily just trade off with the questing beast we have in place since we've got another one in hand. And how large can the ooze get? We've got four creatures in my graveyard and then three more in the opponent, so this ooze is going to be enormous. Vivian Monsters Advocates. In variation. Start growing the ooze. Horn beetle too, so we've got some options. Harbinger doesn't attack all that well into the 3-3 three, three beast. Questing beast can go face. I guess I can just send everyone face and then if they want to chum beast they can save Vivian. Or I can play it safe and send... Although the ooze is probably just lethal by itself here if it connects alongside another creature. So I don't think we can really go wrong by... Playing Horn Beetle. Activating ooze a bunch. And then sending everyone face. And then they will be forced to chum block the scavenging ooze. And the beast will take out Vivian. And we'll get a Harbinger trigger. So just enough food for the ooze here. I guess we've got one more creature. 
and our opponent's in a pretty tough spot. They only have 5 mana, so... Don't need to worry about Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, wiping our board. And I guess with another Questing Beast in hand, that wouldn't even be an issue. And yeah, opponent packs it in. They're just so far behind now. Well, we were on the draw. Opponent had a nice start. Had to trade away our Gargaroth, but yeah, in the end, we still came out on top. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. And our hand's okay. Facing a Temple of Abandon. Garruk, pretty nice alongside the Harbinger. Turn 2, I'll probably just play a 2-2 two -two Stone Coil. Start applying a bit of pressure here. It's going to be meant by a Stomp from Bone Crusher, so I guess this is just a Teamer Adventure deck. Still going to play Harbinger first. And then maybe we can Primal Might next turn. If they just pass, they might have a Brazen Borrower at the ready, so we don't necessarily want to commit to Primal Might. Opponent passes. So yeah, we just want to attack. And there's a Brazen Borrower. And do I just replay it here? Still feels better to me than Garrick make a beast, because then if they have another Brazen Borrower, I just end up losing Garrick. Opponent passes once again, could once again have a Brazen Borrower at the ready. Let's find out. Alright, this time we get to connect. And those are some goodies. Don't hate Elder Gargaroth. Could also take Ooze so we can play Yorva and Ooze in the same turn. Although that could be weak to another Stomp. Let's take Gargaroth. Opponent's just gonna flash in the Brazen Borber, which can't really attack into the Gargaroth. Or maybe it can. If I block the Giants, I prevent one more damage, but then another Stomp can take out Gargaroth, so... We'll block the borrower. And then... Can my opponent have a sweeper here, maybe? Like a Storm's Wrath? That would be a little strange, but I guess not impossible. In which case I don't want to make a beast, but I want to draw a card instead. Yeah, let's just draw a card. Alright, I guess it's going to be double stomp. So making another beast could have worked out slightly better. But we're still in pretty decent shape. So now I have 6 mana. Can play Yorvo plus another Harbinger. Add a ton of beef to the board. And then next turn we can maybe trample over with Garruk plus Primal Mites. Maybe should have attacked first here, but I don't think I was going to make a different play. Can block with Yorvo. And alright, they had all four Bone Crushers here. 
Let's see, are they dead? I think so. Just primal mites for the max amount. Should do it. Alright, sweet. Beat up on Teamer Adventures. Bonecrusher Giant's a great card, but the adventure half from Bonecrusher is not as annoying as the adventure half from Brazen Borrower against her deck. Although the 4-3 blocker is certainly better. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand, so we'll keep... Turn 1 Heart's Desire. Turn 2... I could play Serpents. Haven't really decided yet. Another mono black opponent. And Agonizing Remorse might take away the Harbinger here, which can be pretty difficult for them to deal with, although Great Henge and Garruk can also be annoying for a mono black deck. Takes a Harbinger. Yeah, let's keep up the pressure with the Stone Coil. It's also an even creature, so it balances out the Lovestruck Beast being odd. Although then again, they might end up killing the token so the beast can't attack. But it still ramps out the Henge, so let's play Stone Coil for two. Playing Stone Coil for one also has a little bit of merit because of the beast. Ayara. And this turn we can play Lovestruck Beast. And then next turn I could potentially play Henge. Unless the Beast gets killed by Murder Strider. In which case the play is going to be Garruk. And then I could just pump the Serpent here. Or I can make a 3-3 Beast token. I am playing into Extinction events by making a Beast token. So I think I just pump. Yeah, minus seeing, making a beast, and then losing my entire board to extinction event, as well as Garrick, seems bad. Rankle isn't bad, though. So now, if I chump Ayara, I guess Rankle only triggers if it hits a player. So yeah, we'll chump Ayara. Primal Might isn't bad. So we've got options. Of course, Elder Gargoth would be great if there's no other Murder Strider coming up. Let's see, if I pump the Serpents, this will be a 5-5. So, actually, that lets me cheat out the Great Henge as well here. So I can play Henge and then still Primal Might for 2. Seems pretty good. And hit for seven. Garruk doesn't die to Ayara. And we've got a nice Gargoth in hand. And Murderous Rider. Does Ayara attack or stay back? Ayara goes after Garrick. <laughs> that was funny. All right, now we just want to draw as many creatures as possible. Horn beetles, great. And another castle. So I don't mind attacking with the Stone Coil here. Out of our way. Of 
opponent takes it. Triton goes after Garrick. Trade for the Horn Beetle. And Remorse is gonna see a basic forest. Can still exile something from my graveyard to potentially nerf a future scavenging ooze, but our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet. So the synergy between Garrick helping us cheat out the Great Henge was quite nice here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. We're missing a 3-drop, but that's the cards we are most likely to draw here. Between our Lovestruck Beasts, Garruk's Harbingers and Yorvo. Let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Goblin Arsonists. And yeah, we drew our 3-drop, perfect. Let's see if the Horn Beetle survives a turn. It does not. And let's see how they handle Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig. Next turn I can just slam down Questing Beast. Could have also decided to play a Lostrug Beast on 3, so this turn I could play Henge. And a triple Goblin Arsonist on defense is interesting. They can block the Questing Beast. And then next turn I'll be able to play Henge and play Lovestruck Beasts. So, yeah, this seems fine. And probably keep your on defense, because if they triple block they can take it out. I mean... I guess I wouldn't be sad with a triple block, but I kind of want your vote to stick around to help me power out the henge, and then maybe we can attack once it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Attacks with all. Uh, I guess it could have an infuriate here. So if I put your in front of fervent champion, infuriate's not enough to kill any of my stuff. It's going to be Rimrock Knight Adventured. And now we get to slam down the Henge. And playing Harbinger is even better than the Beast here. Smash for 10. Opponent still stuck on two lanes. There's a third. Thanks with all. Don't see a reason not to just take it here. And Annex still leaves them dead on board. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Fine opening hands. Turn on Heart's Desire, turn to Horn Beetle, turn three Beast with a bit of removal. Opponent playing out a Merfolk Secret Keeper, so maybe they're playing a deck that can attack with high toughness creatures, although most of those cards are rotating out. I guess it's just a blue green adventure deck, and they wanted to play out the 0 4 blocker right away. No harm in attacking first, but opponent's just gonna block here. And it's gonna be double Beanstalk Giant with Lucky Clover in play. Pretty strong. And a second Lucky Clover. Alright, if they have any adventures left, we could be in trouble. 
Hench could be great if the beast sticks around. Get in for one damage. Opponent passes with six mana. So they could have Brazen Borrower here to bounce two things, in which case playing Great Henge first doesn't necessarily accomplish all that much, since they're just going to bounce the Beast and the uh, Henge here. Although I guess I can tap it for two mana, but I'm not going to Primal Might, but I could then Heart's Desire. If they have a Sublime Epiphany, I'll be sad to play Henge first. So I think I'm just going to move to combats, get in, and see what happens. Opponent chumps, alright, maybe they don't have anything. Now the token doesn't uh, draw us a card, but that's fine. Seven mana for Beanstalk Giants. But they might just be dead here. Opponent's at 14. If I tap all my mana, I can Primal Might for 5. And yeah, that's just game. There's probably a few other ways we could play this too here. But a Mono Green Stompy deck is unforgiving. If you stumble, miss a play for a turn, you're gonna be behind. We can be a little bit soft to sweeper effects if we don't draw our Henges or our Garrix. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's the strength of the Mono Green Stompy deck. So we faced a decent range of decks, ranging from more aggressive to a little bit more controlling. And yeah, the Green Stompy deck is definitely going to be a uh, prime deck to take advantage of rotation and be potentially one of the better decks. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.